welcome to Control M workload automation support video series. In this video, we will show you how to define and use a control resource in order to avoid the concurrent execution of jobs. And we will see how the job flow changes depending on how the control resource definition mode is defined. There are cases in which a physical object, like a file or a database, should be managed by many jobs uh, during the day. Sometimes they need to be read, sometimes they need to be updated. Because of this, there may be a need to protect the physical object from multiple updates that could damage it or uh, update it in an incorrect sequence. And uh, this is the reason why we do need control resources to help keep the schedule flow safe enough against uh, accidental concurrent execution of jobs. Next, we will see a demo to further understand the logic of control resources. For this demo, I have already created a folder with uh, four jobs as you can see job one is shared and job three job one and job job one shared and job three shared are in a chain job two has no link and can be submitted concurrently with job one shared and job three shared job exclusive must be submitted alone when it runs and that means no other job in the folder must be in execution. All jobs of the folder run a simple sleep command as we can see. So let's check job one share definition in the prerequisites tab. I have defined a control resource called demo resource and I have set it it's mode as shared. Uh, this means that job one shared can be submitted when other jobs use the same resource in shared as well. On the other hand, it should not be submitted if another job is in execution and it allocates demo resource in mode exclusive. On the actions tab, job one shared puts a condition when it ends. Job three shared being job, job one shared's child has two prerequisites, the condition and the control resource demo resource, and we want it in a shared mode. Job two shared has no link but has demo resource in shared as well, meaning it can run in parallel to job one and job two. And all of them must be submitted if job exclusive is in execution. For this demo, we suppose that job exclusive has the need for manual confirmation. Demo resource is exclusive. And our expectation is then that if it is in execution, no other job of the folder must be submitted. This would apply to other jobs as well using demo resource in exclusivity other than shared. Before being submitted, no other jobs using demo resource have to be in execution. We order the job. Next, let's move to the monitoring domain to check their behavior. As expected, job one shared and job two shared have been submitted together concurrently. And in the meantime, job two shared has already completed job 
exclusive is waiting for manual confirmation and demo resource. So we, sh we will go ahead and give the confirmation for, for that. And as we can see, it still doesn't get submitted. And that is expected because job one shared is still using the demo resource, even if it's, an, if, even if it's a shared um, resource. When job one shared ends, it frees the control resource and it puts the condition for job three shared. And at that time, job exclusive will start immediately and allocate a demo resource in exclusive. If we open job three shared waiting list, we can see it was only waiting for demo resource even if it wants it shared. And that's because job exclusive is using its exclusive is using it in exclusive mode. When job exclusive ends, the resource gets freed and finally job three shared can be submitted. Summarizing. We have seen that when a job allocates a control resource in exclusive mode, it inhibits other job submission if they use the same control resource, independent of whether the resource is shared or exclusive. All jobs are now running as they should. This concludes the demo. Thank you for watching. For more videos like this, go to our YouTube channel.